Hello, good fellows. Brass Willie here, and I've got something in my pocket for you. It is a Charter Arms Undercover Et, which is a rather interesting pistol because this is a small frame, and I'm gonna flag myself into the dude who freaked out that I flagged myself. Cope, seethe, and dilate, buddy. Anyway, this is a six-shot pistol. Ooh. Six is one more than five, last I checked, but you get a small frame, once again, and the neat thing about this being a six-shot in 32 H&R Magnum is that you can chamber a variety of rounds. You can fire 32 Smith & Wesson short, you can fire 32 long, or some may call it 32 new Colt or Colt Police. It's the same thing, they just wanted to rebrand it, so you can see the difference here already and these are both uh 85 grain bullets we have a 32 long with a buffalo bore hard cast 100 grain wad cutter and more on this in a minute and then the 32 h and r magnum you can see just the difference in length between those two so you get more powder more velocity and it won't fit in this gun, but just for reference, this is the 32, 327 Federal Magnum, which is super spicy. Maybe I'll do a bit on that pistol. But what you're getting is, uh, ignore the, the short, this isn't even worth shooting. But the, um, the 100 grain, Buffalo Boar pushes this guy up to about 900 feet per second. In most of the gel tests I've seen, you're getting anywhere from 14 to 16 inches of penetration with a really interesting wound tract because of the shape of the bullet, it uh, imparts a lot of its energy. And then as you up the velocities, you can start using a hollow point and you'll actually get expansion. Uh, the 85 grain H&R Magnum can go anywhere from, you know, 1300, 1400. This is actually a Buffalo Bore 100 grain rated at 1300 feet per second. And this has pretty solid performance. So it's an interesting versatile pistol and the round itself is very interesting. I think 32 is probably the round to carry in a small pocket snubby, uh, just because you get that extra shot and you can pump the velocities up without a lot of recoil. Shooting 32 is comically uh, easy to do. I mean, I'm holding a two inch circle at seven yards with that sucker. Um, and this isn't a bad pistol either. I'll show you the double action here is quite good, right? And that's with my limp wrist, but you know, great double action, single action, spectacular. So there's me on it and boom. So I did a little trigger work to this pistol, not a lot. And you can see these distinctive G10 grips, which I put in here again, full coverage. So even the comically low recoil from the 32 is next to nothing. Uh, shooting the 32 Magnum, you do start to feel it, but it's not uncomfortable, it's just loud and concussive. The final thing, and this is where you get into these budget revolvers, uh, Charter Arms is a budget company and they make affordable pistols, uh, fine pistols, but once you get them apart, you can see the tooling is a little rougher and my one issue with this is the front sight, which I talked to them, it was shooting very low and they had me, I basically dremeled it off until I got it hitting at point of aim with 100 grain um, 32 Smith & Wesson. So again, this is my choice for carry load. It's uh, 100 grain, 900 feet per second, good gel test. You don't have to put up with the concussive blast and very low recoil. So I've got it zeroed for 100 grain 32 Smith & Wesson. If you shoot anything else, Sometimes it's a little high, sometimes it's a little low, but again, I'm a mediocre shooter. I got a B rank in USPSA and I can hold the two inch circle at seven yards with a double action revolver all day long. So other than that, you'll see I did uh, paint my handiwork here with some bioluminescent or fluorescent or whatever. It, it glows in the dark. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, just to get a better sight picture. So that's it. Uh, again, great pistol, a lot of fun. The only other thing I have to say is that everything I have ever learned about the royal family, I've learned against my will.